welcome back to your social science class political science today we will move to the last chapter of political science that is local government in this chapter children we will be studying about the importance of forming of local government objectives and functions of local government formation administration responsibilities and the duties so the, when we tell local government children this is a of a very old concept uh, during the times so when we study about the history um, regarding the kingdoms of india the importance was given for the growth of the local self government so when we tell local civil uh, local self government it provides a link between the government and the masses that is the people so even Uh, and it also helps the people of the locality to tell their problems we can tell our problems what are the problems that the people are facing and it also helps to solve the local problems at the local level with the cooperation and involvement of the people is also very necessary here so the involvement of when the people are involved in the the involved then uh, in the administration then it strengthens it gives strength to the democratic institution at the grassroot level that is at the basic level so here the people are vested with powers of electing they have the power to elect the representatives to the local administrative bodies so the help Uh, so the self governing bodies or we call them as the local self government became the basis of for the decentralization of power so in 1882 children lord ripton he tabled the bill on local government so with this bill what has happened the formation of the uh, from this bill we are enable to form to form the local government so lord ripton we he is so we can see here the lord uh, uh, ripton he is considered as the father of local government in india we see that even today the indian followers uh, follows the british model of local self government created more than 100 years ago by lord ripon's resolution of 1882 lord ripon stressed the need to create local bodies across the country and the involvement of the local people in the management of their own ripons that is why ripon is seen as the father of local administration in india we see that the acts of 1919 and 1935 so what is there in 1935 so 1935 which was passed by the british during this time the british were ruling when we tell 1919 and 1935 india was under the control of the british people so the british people they passed by uh, passed by the british provided it gives it gave more powers to the local self governing institutions in india so after we got the independence children the government of india appointed many committees and passed the acts to realize the dream of the grama swaraj of our father of the nation when i tell father of the nation whom does it uh, repels to whom we are saying yeah we are telling about gandhi ji so this is the dream of the gandhi ji grama swaraj so here we see uh, here we see that see, see uh, the recommendations of round table conference was published in 1933 here the reports of the committee so in that committee we have sir uh, agha khan zafir ul haq khan safat ahmed khan and abdur rahim ah ghaznevi they published in 1934 in a bill of law after the approval of the british parliament the bill enforced as the government of india act in 1935 this act contains 14 parts and 10 schedules constitutes of two parts 
So, one is we are having the provincial subject and the second part is the federal subjects. So, the political, uh, political leaders, what did they do? They rejected it and quit the declared uh, and declared as a defective document. Then we move on to what we should be knowing, what one all is there in these acts. So, we saw about the act of 1935. So, what is there in the act of 1919? This is also this 1919. This you will be studying again in your 10th standard in history children. So, in this 1919 act, it, it is also known as the Montego Chels Ford reforms. So, here the relaxed central government over provinces, it divided the provincial subjects into two parts, transferred and reserved. It introduced uh, the bicameralism, that is the upper house and the lower house. And 50% of the seats in the Viceroy's Executive Council were given to the Indians. So, in addition to the direction which was included in the Indian constitution, which states that the state shall take steps to organize the village panchayat and give them the adequate powers and the authority to function efficiently so that even the village also develops. So, according to the 73rd and 74th amendment, uh, amendment which came into force in 1993 became the milestone in the history of the Panchayat Raj system children. So, according to this, all the states has now passed a legislation to implement the provisions of the 73rd and the 74th amendment. During 10 years since these amendments came into force, that is 1994 to 2004, many states have, have had at least two rounds of election to their local bodies. States like Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and a few others have a fact held three elections so far. So, we also have to see what are the salient features are there in the uh, for 73rd and the 74th constitution amendment acts. So, the panchayat municipalities will be the institutions of self-government, basic units of democratic system that is the grama sabhas which are there in the villages and ward committees that is in the municipalities compromising all the adult members registered as OTAs. We are having a three-tier system of panchayat at the village, intermediate block, taluk or mandal and the district level. Smaller states with population below 2 million will have only two tires children. The, 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 if the population is extended more than 2 million, we will be having a three-tier system of panchayat. So, seats at the all levels filled by the direction of which has been directed by the election. So, the seats are also reserved for scheduled caste and the chairperson of the panchayat at all the levels also shall be reserved for SC and STs in proportion to their population. One third of the total number of seats reserved for women, one third of the seats reserved for SC and STs also reserved for women one third of the chairperson at all levels reserved for women. Uniform five year term and elections to constitute new bodies to be completed before the expiry of the term. In the event of dissolution, election is compulsory within the six months. Within the six months. So, we see that in addition to this included, uh, uh, included was included in the Indian constitution which states that, that, she, that the state shall take steps to organize the people village panchayat and provide them with advocate uh, powers and authority to function efficiently. According to the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments which came into effect in 1993 became the milestone in the history of India as we see. So, as per the amendment from the article 243 to 243 to 243O of schedule 9, Panchayat Raj system is, uh, is given in detail. So, the 74th amendment provides the constitution status to civic administration. 
in schedule 9a articles from 243p to 243z G D gives the detail of the civic administration. So when we tell the 73rd amendment, the same thing what I told in the previous the slide, it is the same here. So one uh, point is added here. Three tier panchayat system at the village level and the district levels except the state with population less than 20 lakhs where intermediate panchayats may not be constituted. The reservation is for SC, ST and women, regular elections every five years and also we are have, there is the establishment of independent state election commission. State finance commission has to be set up once in five years. Powers to be devolved upon panchayats as to, to enable them to function the institution of self-government. So this is there in the article 243G read with the schedule 11. So now what is there? I told about the 73rd and 74th. So 73rd we saw what is in the 74th Amendment Act children. In the 74th Constitutional Amendment Act of 1992, it aims to strengthen the Alps through the de devaluation of power towards the decentralization. The main aims and objectives of 74th constitutional amendment is to set up the institutional mechanism to facilitate decentralization, de demarcate role of ULBs, specific, specify their function, specify the areas deemed as urban to include new urbanizing areas, ensure the representation of public specially deprived class or woman, ensure that the ULBs are not suspended. So, all these are there. So, the government, so we see that the government, the local government functioned in Karnataka in the pre-independent period. In the post-independent period, pre-independent means before independence children. Post-independence means after independence period, we may have the committees which were appointed by our state government to establish and strengthen the local bodies in our state. In 1983, the Panchayat Raj Act was introduced and it came into effect in 1985. According to this act, the Jilla Panchayat at district level, the Taluk Panchayat at Taluk level and Gram Panchayat at village level were created through direct elections. The Karnataka Panchayat Raj Act was framed as per the 73rd Amendment of the Indian Constitution in 1993. This was named as Karnataka Grama Swaraj and Panchayat Raj Act 1993 in 2015 children. We also see that, we also see that the current Panchayat Raj system is according to this act. We also see that in 1989, Rajiv Gandhi introduced the 65th uh, uh, bill, Nagarapalike bill, but bill was defe defeated by in Rajya Sabha. In 1991, Narsimha Rao government reintroduced the bill as 74th uh, bill and it became the act as 74th CAA. In 1992, but came into force on 1st June 1993. So, this act added a new part 9a containing the articles of 243p to 243zg. Also, it added the 12th schedule which contains 18 function items of municipalities. Articles which are there, article 243p, we in that we are having the definition in article 243q. It gives the details about the constitution of municipality. It states the three types of municipal bodies. See, this is the Grama Pam Karnataka Grama Swaraj Mata Pancha Panchayat Raj Adhinamaya Adhinayama 1993. What we are having that, and we are also when we tell the local self government, it is at the bottom of the administrative uh, at the pyramid, it functions the summary of the local government. What do we mean by so the functions is at the grassroots level, it is formed by the people of creating. A uh, certain locality, local people elect own representative, local governments of an area. It functions. What are the functions of the local self-government? 
local pro it discusses about the local problem you can see here the local uh, problem what are the basic needs of the local people so now we will have to know now we will move on to what are the uh, meaning of the what is the meaning of local self government Local self-government is an institution comprising of locally elected representative managing the affairs of the locality and providing them with the basic amenities. Basic amenities is food, clothing, shelter and now even education is also one of the basic necessities which has come now. So, in rural areas such an institution we call it as Grama Panchayat and in urban areas we call this as a municipal corporation or municipality. The Panchayat Raj system was first inaugurated at Nagura in Rajasthan on October 2nd, 1959. So, then it was started in Andhra Pradesh but the real beginning uh, breakthrough came on 24th April 1993 when the constitution that is the 73rd amendment act 1992 came into force. So, now we will move on to what are the objectives of the local government. It involves the local people in solving the local problems of their own locality. It provides the, the, the knowledge of administration how the administration of the local self-government is carried out, the, uh, it gives the knowledge to the common people. It also helps in the decentralization of power and making the administration more efficient. It also gives training or develop uh, co leadership qualities among the people at the grassroots levels. Now we will move on to what are the functions, the importance of the local self-government. When we tell it provides the foundation for the democratic structure, training ground of local leadership, the same objectives. Local people know the problems and it can suggest better solutions. It encourages self-help and voluntary service saves expenses. Government can reach the ordinary people. It lessens the burden on the state and the central government. Now we will move on to what are the functions of the local government. So to maintain and protect, the first one is they have to maintain and protect the panchayat property. That is the one of the most important one. And it to prepare the annual budget of the local proper, of the local body. To plan and undertake the developmental works like uh, uh, to make the roads, uh, giving electricity to the rural area or uh, to, to the villages, housing and supply of drinking water. And also it encourages and implements the primary, secondary, adult and informal education programs. It undertakes health and family welfare programs and also to maintain cleanliness and sanitation of the, uh, sanitation of the area. And also it prevents all sorts of pollutions and to provide better health facilities. It provides facilities to the distribution of essential commodities like food grains, kerosene to the people. It encourages the registration of births and the deaths. It encourages agriculture, animal husbandry, khadi and handicraft industries. Apart from that, it also undertakes the programs for con conservation of soil, water and forest. To execute, uh, to execute the agriculture and extension programs to help the farmers, it plans and implements the welfare scheme for the benefits of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, weaker sections of women and children. It provides the marketing facilities and reading room facilities. It collects the fact of, uh, sorry, taxes, fees and penalties. To identify the beneficiaries of the various welfare programs of the government. When we all tell this, now we have to tell how when all these works are done, when it is doing such functions, how does the sources come? So it needs the sources, it needs the money for the development, the government. So the local self-governing bodies require funds to implement various plans and projects. So the income how they get is amount which is collected through water cess, health cess, education cess, library and reading room cess. 
amount which is collected through building tax, vacant land tax, taxes on the business establishment and markets, entertainment houses and advertising bodies. It also collects the taxes from the uh, at the tourist spots, rental and lease amount collected on their properties and financial grants <coughs> from the state government. So these are the sources where it gets. In the next class children we will move on to the composition of local governing bodies. In the next class we will study about this. Thank you children.